What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. This week was exciting because we got software updates across the board. So we got iOS 15.4.1, macOS 12.3.1, watchOS 8.5.1, and of course the other updates for the other platforms as well. So that's going to be what we're going to discuss in this video, along with if the battery drain on 15.4 was actually fixed with 15.4.1. And then after that, we're gonna discuss how hackers stole user information from Apple, when the M2 iPad Pro is coming, why smartphone demand is slowing down, and much more. And as always, if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. All right, so the first thing we need to talk about, of course, is iOS 15.4.1 and the battery drain fix. So of course, iOS 15.4, the number one complaint with that update was battery drain. And I can tell you guys, after using 15.4.1 for over 24 hours now, going on 48 hours, I've noticed a big difference in battery life. I did not expect it to be noticeable, but the battery life is definitely much better on 15.4.1, even if you weren't experiencing any drain on 15.4. Take a look at my main phone here, the iPhone 13 Pro, and look how long I went without charging after updating to 15.4.1. Almost instantly after, I noticed a big change in battery life for the better. And after reading all of your guys' comments on the 15.4.1 What's New video, it seems like you all have the same or a very similar experience where you're seeing much better battery life. So it looks like Apple did actually address the battery drain. Now we just have to hope it doesn't come back in a future version. Now, something else I noticed that's very interesting with 15.4.1 is that it fixes an erase all content and settings bug. So I just returned the green iPhone 13 and 13 Pro, and when I went to try to erase the content on them, I was not able to until I updated to 15.4.1. So when it goes to this screen right here where it saves a backup of the phone before you erase it, when you click on skip, it would not skip it and it would not allow you to erase the phone until you update to 15.4.1. So I found that to be very interesting. It happened on both those devices and I also tested it on another device and it happened there as well. So that appears to be a bug. I have not seen anybody else mention that, but that is also addressed with 15.4.1. Also the braille fix in 15.4.1 was apparently an issue since the initial build of iOS 15.0 and it was extremely annoying for those blind folks out there who rely on braille devices. You can see here, somebody left a comment telling me just how annoying that was and that they're so happy it's been fixed. There's also a new feature inside of Apple Maps. So they just added real-time roadway hazard information from the alert safety cloud. So this is basically going to help notify drivers when they're approaching emergency vehicles, incident responders, work zones, and other hazards on the road. And this was an over the air update, so you don't have to be on 15.4.1 to start seeing this. And for all of you baseball fans, Friday Night Baseball is coming to Apple TV Plus on April 8th. So I talked about this in a previous episode, how Apple is going to start you know, showing these games in Apple TV Plus, but that's going to be beginning on April 8th. So you're gonna be able to watch two consecutive games on every Friday night of the season with pregame and postgame shows included. That is awesome. I think that's worth the price of Apple TV Plus alone. So can't wait to see that. And I will keep you guys updated when that actually does roll out to Apple TV Plus. Now, do you guys remember last episode when I said that a bug fix update was coming very, very soon before the end of March? Well, yeah, of course it did. And not only on iOS, but macOS got some much needed bug fixes. And I mentioned the game controller bug in my what's new video, but we also got a fix for Macs with a replaced logic board. So your machine will now not get bricked if you replaced your logic board and tried to update to Mac OS. So Mac OS 12.3.1 fixes that bug. Also regarding the external display bug, Apple only mentioned that this was an issue with the 2018 Mac mini, which is pretty deceiving because it affected many more machines than that. And that was confirmed by several people online. And thankfully this update fixed the bug for all machines and not just that Mac mini that Apple mentioned. But as far as anything else in iOS and iPadOS 15.4.1, I've not noticed anything else that has been changed. I know some people still talked about the storage bug still remaining. So I'm not sure what to tell you at this point because if that still doesn't load, you know, that may just be on your device or maybe you're not waiting long enough. Sometimes it could take up to like five to 10 minutes if you're on an older device. So just give it some time. It should load that fixed for most people or that was fixed for most people in 15.4 so it should not have reverted back with 15.4.1 but aside from that there's really no other bugs out there that are widespread i don't really see anybody else mentioning 
bugs consistently like they did with the battery drain on 15.4. And then as far as performance goes, performance is fine in 15.4.1, but like I mentioned in my What's New video, it feels exactly the same as 15.4 to me. So there were no UI bugs or no issues really with performance on 15.4, so there really wasn't anything to fix to begin with. So 15.4.1 feels the exact same in terms of performance, so I would not update if you haven't already expecting any type of performance boost. However, on the other hand, again, battery life is much better here with this latest update, and you're noticing a big difference within the first 48 hours, which is sometimes where you can see the worst of the battery life because everything is re-indexing. But we see great battery life pretty much instantly after updating, which is a great sign. All right, so now let's move on to what is next for Apple. And we have to first address the fact that Apple has still not released a beta. So the last time that we got a beta, was on March 8th. That was the RC build of iOS 15.4. So that was, you know, almost a month ago when we got the last beta. That is a record, I believe. I don't think Apple has ever gone this long without pushing out a beta. So usually after the final release of a major release like 15.4, we usually see a beta the next day or, you know, within a week. But Apple has gone almost a month now without a beta, which is extremely rare. And again, I don't think it's ever happened before going that long between betas. So with that being said, it's really hard to predict when Apple's actually going to release a 15.5 beta one. It's easy to say it's coming next week or the week after, but really nobody knows. Nobody has any idea. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say it's gonna come at some time in April because it's really hard to predict when exactly that's going to come. The one thing we do know is that Mark Gurman said 15.5 is going to release around WWDC time, which is in early June. So I would expect 15.5, the final release at the end of May or early June, which would mean that the betas should be starting soon. But again, we've said that before, we've thought that before, so we'll just have to wait and see when we get that first beta of 15.5. But I would not expect anything major in that update anyways. You know, all the big features came in 15.4, so just keep that in mind. And then I also think we're gonna see an iOS 15.4.2 in April, at some point in April. So we're probably gonna have more bugs that need addressed, more security issues that need addressed, and Apple will probably push out a 15.4.2. All right, so now let's move on to some of the latest Apple news from the past week. First up, if you ever wondered why my videos show you that an iOS update has been released before Apple does, before your iPhone does, Craig Federici has an explanation. So someone recently emailed Craig to ask why they didn't receive an update notification for iOS 15.4 a couple of weeks after the initial release. And in response, Craig said this, we incrementally roll out new iOS updates by first making them available for those that explicitly seek them out in settings. And then one to four weeks later, after we've received feedback on the updates, ramp up to rolling out devices with auto update enabled. And again, that's just another reason why you should have the bell icon clicked on my channel down below next to that subscribe button. Next up, let's talk iPhone SE 3 and the abysmal interest in this phone. So according to reports, Apple is cutting production by 20% for the new third generation iPhone SE just weeks after the launch. They're citing low demand and uncertainty caused by global conflict as the reasons. Here's what Ming-Chi Kuo said on Twitter. Shanghai lockdown doesn't affect the iPhone SE production. However, the new iPhone SE demand is lower than expected. The delivery status in stock as one of the proofs. And I cut my shipment estimation in 2022 to 15 to 20 million units versus 25 to 30 million previously. So that's a pretty steep cut in production, especially this early on. But I can't say that I'm shocked by this, and here's why I'm not, and I shared this on Twitter. The average person looking to buy an iPhone SE tends to upgrade their phone every three to five years. So most of the market for this phone already bought the 2020 SE, and it's gonna be sticking with that for another year or so. And due to that and the data design, low demand is not surprising. Now on that same subject, there are also recent reports that smartphone demand in general is down. And this is according to a TSMC chairman. He said that demand for consumer electronics like smartphones and PCs is slowing due to continued geopolitical uncertainties and the continued COVID lockdowns in China. He said, quote, everyone in the industry is worried about rising costs across the overall supply chain. The semiconductor industry already indirectly experienced that cost increase. So what do you guys think of this? I personally don't see any type of decline in demand. Personally, just from everything I've seen in the comments and just 
people in general. I don't think that demand has really gone anywhere, but what do you think? I could be wrong. Do you think this is just a phase that we're going to recover from, or do you see a world where smartphone sales actually do decline as customers realize just how powerful their phones are even years later? Because there's a lot of people out there right now who think they need to upgrade their phone every year or every two years. Do you think those people are going to eventually realize that they don't need to because their phone they have now is super powerful and will last five years? I don't know. What do you guys think about this? And then speaking of upgrading your phone, let's talk iPhone 14. So last week we showed the leaked schematics for the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, and they revealed that the iPhones would be getting thicker and that they'd have a bigger camera bump. And now we know why. According to Ming-Chi Kuo, the main reason for a larger and more prominent rear camera bump of the 14 Pro and Pro Max is upgrading the wide camera to 48 megapixels versus the 13 Pro and Pro Max's 12 megapixels. The diagonal length of 48 megapixels CIS will increase by 25 to 35%, and the height of 48 megapixels 7P lens will increase by 5 to 10%. And that same 48 megapixel camera system is expected to elevate mobile phone camera photography to a whole new level. So if that's the case, and that was from Ming Chi Kuo, by the way, he was quoted as saying that. So if that's the case, you know, I'll take some additional beefiness to this iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max, and I don't mind if that camera bump sticks out a little bit further if it's going to be that much of an improvement in the camera and video quality. And the reason I mentioned video is because we are expected to be able to shoot video in 8K. So those videos will be, of course, viewable on an 8K display, or more importantly, on Apple's rumored AR VR headset, which is going to have multiple 8K displays. So I cannot wait to see everything that Apple announces this year. But one thing we will unfortunately not be seeing this year is the iPhone 14 getting under display Touch ID. And again, this is coming from Ming-Chi Kuo. He says, quote, I previously predicted iPhones would support under display fingerprint sensing slash touch ID in 2023 at the earliest, but the latest survey indicates new iPhones in 2023 and 24 may not adopt under display touch ID. Face ID with a mask on iPhone is already a great biometric solution. So for those hoping for under display touch ID, keep dreaming. It seems like Apple is much more likely to integrate touch ID into the side button of the iPhone than they are under the display. I honestly don't know if that's ever gonna happen under the display. I mean, it probably will eventually, but I think it's much more likely in the next couple years, next three or four years to be in the side button, the power button of the iPhone. Now, moving back to present time, Mark Gurman is expecting a new iPad Pro with the M2 chip to launch this fall as we previously expected. So in his latest Power On newsletter, he said that because Apple did not release a new iPad Pro at the peak performance event, he's expecting the new models to arrive between September and November. And this iPad Pro is reportedly going to have an M2 chip with additional GPU cores, allegedly up to nine and 10 cores compared to seven and eight core options on the 2020 model. And it's also going to have MagSafe for wireless charging, which is going to be nice. And it's going to be the first iPad to have the ability to wirelessly charge. All right, enough about upcoming products. Let's talk about a big service that Apple is currently working on, and that is payment processing. So according to Bloomberg, Apple is developing its own payment processing technology and infrastructure with plans to bring future financial services in-house. This would cut out the need for financial partners like Goldman Sachs and help boost profits even more. The first product that's going to rely on this new system is expected to be the upcoming Buy Now Pay Later service. That feature called Apple Pay later is going to have two parts apple pay and four for short term four installment payment plans without interest and apple pay monthly installments for long-term payment plans with interest. And there's a lot more to this report. So if this topic interests you, I'll leave the link down below to the whole Bloomberg report. And it's very interesting. And it seems that Apple is more focused on switching to in-house solutions for future products and services, not the current ones. So hopefully with that increase in profit, we can start getting cheaper iPhones or headphones or AirPods back in the box, but we all know that's not gonna happen. And then finally, some interesting news about a hack that impacted Apple and others. So so according to reports, hackers posed as law enforcement officials and sent forged emergency data requests to obtain user data, such as customer addresses, phone numbers, and IP addresses, and they were successful. So they social engineered Apple, Meta, and Snap employees into getting this info by hacking the email domains of law enforcement officials in multiple countries. Cybersecurity researchers believe that some of the hackers sending the forged requests are minors located in the UK and the US. 
One of the miners is also believed to be the mastermind behind the cybercrime group Lapsus, who hacked Microsoft, Samsung, and Nvidia in the past. And as for what this hacking group plans to do with this information, Bloomberg says this, the information obtained by the hackers has been used to enable harassment campaigns. The three people said it may be primarily used to facilitate financial fraud schemes. And by knowing the victim's information, the hackers could use it to assist in attempting to bypass account security. So this is super interesting and honestly pretty alarming as well. And while some people thought that this was Apple collecting data on users, you know, that was just basic user information, not data like web history or text message history or contacts or anything like that. This was just good old social engineering by hackers. You know, no company is safe from something like that, which is pretty wild. So there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some additional information on iOS 15.4.1. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts on all those stories we just shared and also your thoughts on 15.4.1 and how it's treating your iPhone or iPad. I would really appreciate if you guys subscribed as well so you don't miss next week's episode. But anyways, guys, Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.